Hello and welcome to the shop. Remember this guy? While I was turning this four axis stem, I was contacted by my friend and channel sponsor Brad from Brad's Workbench. And he asked, can I make a pencil like this? And the immediate answer is yes, yes I can. However, it's going to take a little bit of work. Now I have always told my students that pen making involves primarily setup. And this is going to take a considerable amount of setup in order to produce the same effect for axis turning on a pen barrel. I'm not going to film all of that setup because it's tedious, but I will come back when I have everything ready and explain to you exactly what I did in order to produce a four axis barrel for a pen. Stick around. This one's going to be pretty interesting. Okay, my original plan to do this was to start out like normal pen blanks, drill it, and uh, then I was going to turn a uh, disc with a um, uh, shaft off the end uh, to plug it in on each end and then I was going to do my offsets on the plugs. However, sitting here in front of the lathe, I believe if I leave myself a certain amount of wood to mount to the chuck straight to mount in the chuck, I can do my offset turning without um, I can drill it after I do my offset turning as long as I keep it fairly thick. So that's what we're going to try to do. This is a, this is a different operation because although offset turning is, is tricky, doing it at this small of a scale is more tricky. So what I want to do is give myself a limit, roughly an inch. That's going to end up going into the pin jaws on my chuck. So my offset is going to be on this end and I'm going to try to leave this round. So let's see how that works. First thing I need to do is mark my axes. So I'm going to give myself axis number one from top to bottom so that they match. I'm going to pull that out. And get the compass. So that line is axis number one. I want to make sure I translate it right here and right here. And we're working on a much finer scale than when I did the uh, big. Uh, stem for the goblet, so this is a little bit more intricate. So these kits come with uh, come with instructions and they should usually they tell you yeah 0.435 inches so I can go four three five And I can set my caliper to the diameter, and the top and the bottom are the same diameter, so I don't need to be too concerned about that. But that's the diameter I need to set half of. So 0.435 is going to be 0.217. That's the right measurement. I'm going to set this. We'll go back to 435. Should be double. It's a little, I'm a little bit off. It doesn't have to be super precise, but it needs to be close. I don't do maths, I'm guessing. I'm not a math guy. 
That should be close enough. And this doesn't have to be exact, but when you're doing uh, multi-axis, one of the things you need to consider is that um, the wider, the further out from the center your secondary axes are, the more extreme your uh, um, the more extreme your 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 deflection for your off center uh, turning, and this is a pencil or a pen, so we really don't want it to be wild. All right, so that's my first point. It still has to be able to fit in the kit and be held in the hand. One, two. Now if you skip every other time when you take the radius and divide your uh, uh, piece by it, you should get three evenly spaced uh, extra axes. Now remember I translated it from the top here to the other side. So this is going to be one. This is going to be two. And this is going to be three. And we're going to come down. Follow that line. Where did I lose my line? There it is. Follow that line. I want to make sure that my axis is the same. Okay. All right. Oh, there it is. I'm going to make sure I'm on my pencil. There it is. Okay. So follow that line. I want to make sure my axis is the same. So this is going to be one. This is very small. This makes this a little bit more challenging doing it tiny like this. That's number one. Oh, slipped. Skate, what are you doing? Is there a mouse over there? Two. My Malamute's in here acting like he's got something cornered. Three. Okay, now, again, this one's one. Now the way this twist works is you have to translate your numbers the same. So if this is one and this is one, this one to the left is two. So this one over here has to be two as well, otherwise our twist won't be the same. And this one is three. So we go from one, and my line, my stop line's right here. We go from one there. Make sure I'm in the right place. One. Kind of press that in there a little. To two. I have a sharper live center. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch out from the 60 degree to the uh, finer live center because we are working in such a small area.
Okay. There it is. Okay, one. These are the challenges. This is what makes it. Uh, this is what makes it a hundred and twenty-five dollar pen, not a twenty-five dollar pen. Okay, a little bit more positive. And I can actually, this, I'm not turning past this line, so I can actually mark my axes here. So the next one should be two. And the next one will be three. So we'll go back, make sure one's translated. One. I'll put it on the outside. That's going to get turned away, but keep me honest. Two. Straight up. Makes this three. All right. Let's do that again. So this is my safe area. I'm going to start with one here. You go to two. Here. Definitely need a better marker. Hard to see pencil on Bobinga. So if I just do this. One to one, I will get essentially a rounded triangle. But when I go one to two, I get a twist. See, not, you got to be real careful. This is hard. This is hard. Back to one. My lathe's rocking on its blocks. It's making that harder. Got it. Got it. In. All right, one to two. That's our first. That's our first cut. Now, this section. Let me show you the barrel of the, of the pen. Essentially, I've got an inch on either end. I want to use the middle as where my, my uh, actual pen is. So I want to turn this. Um, and I'm, I'm not real worried here. I'm not going past that, but I'm not real worried about this end. I'll probably turn it all the way out, but ultimately that's going to get cut off. But it gives me a little bit of play if I have one, one end or the other that's cleaner than the other. So I have a little bit of room. <laughs> this is a trip. Make sure it's not going to hit my tool rest. It does. Okay. I want to make sure I'm really locked in there. This uh, step center has a tendency to uh, 
spin, but I think we're going to be okay. We're going to take very, very light cuts. I'm going to use my 3 8 inch spindle gouge. One thing I do not want to do is pass that line, that circle, because that's the outer diameter of my bushing for my pen. So that's it. That's all I can do. I can clean up this end, but I can't go past that or I'll make it too narrow for the pen and you'll have a little sharp corner to hold on to. That's the first axis. That's, that's all I can do with a tool. Now, the other challenge here is you can't really machine sand this. You, you gotta hand sand it. And it's rough because it's off axis, so I'm starting with 120 grit, and I am going to sand this entirely with the grain. So in some ways, this is completely backwards. I didn't drill it yet. I haven't, I haven't got it to length yet. I'm gonna wait and do all of that once I've got the multi-axis turned. My original intent was to drill it and then make plugs on either end out of poplar and do my offset and all of that on the plugs that are holding it in. But as I looked at it and I looked at the thickness, um, I just, you know, and this is a good hard wood. Bubenga is a very good hard wood a lot harder than the poplar I was going to use. I uh, decided, hey, let's just try it straight, just like I would any other piece of wood doing the multi-axis turning. And it worked. Uh, it worked really well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So now it's just a matter of keeping my sequence in order. So that's sanded to 400. So this is one to two. Now we have to take it from the second axis to the third. Find my number two, that's two, and my number three, over here. So two, three, this is where it gets dicey. As I'm right on the edge there, so I'm probably going to have a little blowout, but I have extra room on purpose. Yep, I can hear it splitting. So my axes are not going to be exact because I have to get this inside a little bit to hopefully hold it and not split that edge out. But that's okay because I'm going to cut that end off a little bit anyway. All right, hopefully that will <clears throat> hold it. <sighs> this is the point where most of the time in spindle turning the face mask isn't really necessary. This is when it's necessary because I know that's a loose hold. Now we're going to be very gentle, take very light passes.
Well, that went better than I thought it would. And I'm right where I need to be. So that's done, that's that facet. Now we sand. So I lost a little space right here, that's okay. I left that, it's long on purpose. Don't check if you have enough. The barrel of our pen, we're golden, we're good, we're good to go. It's a very, very light touch. You saw anytime I tried to push it a little, it's, it's stopped it. Uh, it takes a very light touch. Um, but it did, but hey, we got it. We got the two facets. So this is all the last uh, axis right here, the third facet. And then it's done. And then, because this is round and I have my center marked on both ends, I can put it in my... Uh, pin jaws and drill it dead center and then I can do all the things you do to make a pen. So back to 120 grit. Again sanding this entire project with the grit not going cross grit because it's really really hard to sand a facet multi uh, multi axis facet axis facet with the lathe turning. It's doable but it hurts. Make sure these blades are clean. This being the blade, this edge that the, where the two fa uh, facets or axes meet, that needs to be nice and crisp. You can see where the original round is right here. That's the last facet. Okay, now comes the final facet. Managed to maintain the outer edges of my diameter of my pen, and uh, it's a trip. So I'm from gone from two to three. I'm going from three to one. So there's number three. And here's number one down here. Take your time with this. This is a little bit of a challenge to maintain equal distances. This is, this is very technically challenging. Okay, so I'm going to drive it in there. Should be good. I probably have to stay light again, uh, light with my passes again, but you can see this is that unturned facet, that's what I'm going to take out. And you can see the end already stripping right there. I'm not happy with that at all. <coughs> We're going to touch that up with a little CA glue, just for safety's sake. I will be able to cut this end off. I'm not worried about having a crack here, but what I am worried about is this coming flying apart while I'm turning my final facet. So for caution's sake, I'm going to drip some uh, uh, CA glue in there. I'll use some Parfix 3408. Once I remember where I put it. Temperatures are low, so I keep it, I'm not putting it in my fridge right now. Uh, in the summertime, uh, CA glue likes cold. In the summertime, this stays in the fridge. This lives in the refrigerator. All right. Let me put a glove on because I'm probably going to stick to this. So these are the challenges. This is why this isn't a $20 pen. <laughs> 
drip and we'll sand and, and you know this is this is far from the finished process final process of this piece uh, my excess all that will be sanded down I'm not sweating that that'll be sanded right back away give it a little juice which is gonna make my finger stick not bad okay so I patched that up I just need it to hold together long enough for me to get the final axis turned. So, uh, it's two to three, correct? I believe it's two to three. Pretty sure I'll be able to confirm it in just a minute. And I could find that axis because of my glue. I'll bring this in. So another way you could do this is with a longer piece of wood and you turn the whole thing, you know, eight inches or whatever. Uh, I just happen to have um, pen blanks that I got from uh, Shock's Functional Art. Um, okay, that's still splitting out. So we're going to, uh, we're going to gusset that with some uh, painter's tape as well. We're going to make it work. Uh, anyway, um, you could do a whole length and then just cut out a section in the middle. That's the other way I think that uh, w would be practical to do this as long as you understand the diameters of your uh, pen. Now I know I'm going to cut some of this off, but I'm not cutting off the part that's going to be right, wrapped around right there where that is. I'm cutting over here and this is the right facet. So I don't know if that's going to work. Again, face shield. So this this is sketchy as can be. So obviously, uh, highly recommend you wear your face shield. Most of the time when you're turning spindle, face shield is a little bit extra. But this time, yeah, wear your face shield. Hold together, baby. Wait, let me step out of the line of fire. All right, here goes nothing. Again, very, very light cuts. I understand I'm going to cut the tape. I'm okay with that. And this is where my original plan of turning plugs may have prevented this issue. Not saying it would, but it might have. That's it. I'm not going to push my luck anymore. I've got good, sharp, crisp lines. That's it. That's, I'm going to call that good. We're going to sand that down and then we will bring in the pin jaws, drill it, glue in the pen body and trim it the same way you would. Again, this is backwards. This process is backwards. I'm turning the pen barrel before I do all the drilling and things. See how that split? I knew that was going to happen. Uh, it is what it is for this challenge. Now what I have to do is figure out what's that effect going to be on my barrel. I think I'm still safe. I think I'm still where I need to be. 
So it splits there. Oh yeah, I'm gonna cut that right outside of that split. I'm gonna sand it down. So I have to go a little deeper here than I wanted to, but I have plenty of clearance. We're fine, we're safe. So I guess the, so the solution to that issue is a longer piece of, uh, a longer pen blank. This is standard pen blank length. Uh, so the solution is longer, go longer, or again, some kind of a uh, mounted, uh, as long as you know you're in center, mounted in something that you can then use that to do your offset. So there's other ways to do this. Um, this I think is probably the simplest way to do it. You can certainly make this project a lot more complex than it has to be. All right, so again, I need to lose that much. So what I'm gonna do is just use my little pull saw here. I'm gonna leave a little extra because I'm gonna sand back the rest. There's that crack. I'm gonna sand back the rest so that I make it even on the end. So we're not exactly perfectly centered. Remember we had that crack? Uh, so um, I, had to, uh, I had to move it a little in order to get it. It's not perfectly centered. That's something I will work on. Um, but that's why we that's why we do things like that. that's why we experiment that's why we try S establish a process and then improve the process oh i have so much room holy crap that's nice okay i'm drilled way down to here i'm going to cut it right there at my little crease uh and then we're going to rig up my uh pen pen barrel end flush rig it's 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 not necessarily the way a lot of people do it yeah, there's my hole good we're good to go it's not necessarily the way a lot of people do it but it works really really well um it's a solution i came up with because at the time i created it i did not have a uh belter disc sander now i do but this is more accurate than that this method i'm about to use so so I have my, my uh, sanding disc here, and then I have a rough boring head set. This sets into an MT2 taper, okay, and then I take a punch that is the same size, oh, I missed a step, see, I'm doing everything backwards, so I'm screwing it up. Never turn the, if you can avoid it, don't turn the pen before you do all these steps. I'm doing it backwards and I'm messing it up. Hang on just a second. Let me get a piece of cardboard, protect the lathe bed. We gotta glue this in there first uh, in order to hold it accurately with the uh, boring set. So, and this is what all the press, all the parts of the pen are press fit into here. So, uh, now I have room. This is not shaped quite, quite the same, right? I didn't get that, but I'm already planning on hand carving. Um, so I already know that I'm going to have to whittle down one end and do a little hand carving and hand polishing and sanding and stuff. Uh, so I'm not really sweating that. Okay, make sure that it fits so we got drilled nice and straight. So, get our glue. Come on, baby, it's time for a new star bond. That might be out of thick. Might have to go to medium. Oh, there we go. So when you glue in a pen barrel in, put it in one end and spin it, and take it to the other end, and that gives you the most uh, full coverage. 
And if you have some kind of a little pushing tool, get your barrel kind of centered where you want it. I think I'm going to take up this much. I'm going to try to get it as close to that end without leaving any of that crack as possible so that uh, I can sand away this white part and have less carving to do. That'll do her. I get, get a little bit of starp on there, but that's all going to get sanded again. Oh, clean off my spurtle, which is now my pen making spurtle. And in spite of wearing a glove, I still get starp on everywhere. I still get super blue everywhere because that's just the nature of doing this. It is what it is. Just sand it off of my fingertips. Starbon needs to sponsor my ass. All right, a little bit of accelerator, which I broke the freaking spray applicator. Hot mess, hot mess. I'm still in recovery mode from the uh, gathering at the Shadow Shield Tavern at the Norse Forge, and <laughs> I still haven't even cleaned up the floor of my shop. Well, it was a good party, though. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so what I need is a, a punch that fits that inside diameter of the... Oh, that's too loose. I'm going to go up one size. There we go. So that punch fits that inside diameter, right? And that goes here in the uh, boring headset. And when I tighten this down, is parallel to the lathe bed. So that lets me square up exactly, precisely square up the ends of my pens. All right, so I just run it all the way out. That gets me out here to the outer edge, which is moving faster than the inside. So you get a little bit more sanding action. This is 180 grit. Uh, because I'm saying the ends that are going to get pressed into the pen, I, it doesn't need to be any finer than that. Now, I do have a lot of excess here, so I'm going to go ahead and make my life a little bit easier and saw some of that off. These cheap little pull saws. Uh, I got this from Harbor Freight. This thing is invaluable. I have a nicer one from uh, uh, one of the big box stores, but uh, these little suckers are a really, really useful little tool, and they're like seven dollars and it's a great little tool okay so i have to sand the most from here so we'll put that in first again same deal when you're sanding don't crank the speed up you're going to do more damage and more harm than good you want to get that little point from that punch as close as you can and then just Turn it so that you sand evenly all the way around. Same as if you're doing a figure eight pattern on a flat. Okay, so we're right. I'm not sure if you can see that glint or not. Uh, we are right above. Let's see if you can see that. We're right above. See the little tiny bit of wood above the metal. I just want to touch. I just want to kiss the metal. So this is the point where you got to be real careful. Ah, don't do that. Don't run the tip of your punch into your sandpaper. Some people claim they can feel when the metal touches. I, I try to back off and check. I don't want, I don't, it's not that I don't trust what I feel, but I still want to confirm Trust but verify. So I want to confirm uh, that I'm not sanding away that metal. Because if this ends up too short, the mechanism won't work right. You have to be as 
precise as possible with this. That's it. That's it. Yep, I'm there. Okay, so now we do the other end, which has a lot less to take off. But this is also important that these are square. Uh, so that your, your pen will press together correctly. I need to kiss it one more time. We're right there. I, that's it. Felt like it. No, I have a tiny bit more. The other thing is you don't want it to be too long or your mechanism won't work. There we go. Okay. So we're now squared up. Tube is squared up. It's sanded to the right length. And I can now press the pen together. But remember, we're outside the diameter uh, with the points here. So I have to do some hand carving. So I'm going to press. There's pieces that go on either end um, that give you that diameter. I'm going to press that. And then I've got to sit down and hand carve. Okay. So this... I do a little bit of hand carving here and I'm going to look at this and I'm going to take a couple more quick passes. This Kiridashi was made for me by ST Knife Designs, Samuel Talkington, he even burned my logo into it. So we're just going to very lightly round this down. This thing is so sharp. Uh, It'll cut your breath. This sucker is nice. But that's how, since I don't have the, uh, since I'm not perfectly centered and since I don't have my um, uh, bushings, which really wouldn't, I mean, you could put it between centers on the bushings and turn the little ends down to the bushings, but this works just as well and probably takes about the same amount of time. Again, uh, just very precise. Take your time. Don't do this fast. Take your time. Okay, hang in here. And remember, you guys, I was going through the same until I got to the stick this out. And this because of the little uh, clip. Just be behind the center and send this So I'm just working out a little bit more precision on this finish. And one of the tools that I find extremely useful is this little hobby file kit. I got it. Uh, Mose, uh, and I think it was 10 or 12 dollars but for little fine detail work say if you're doing uh, um, puncturing a piece with your Dremel or whatever and you want to clean inside edges these little files are fabulous this is just a great little tool to get in that little tight aspect close round these little edges over so I highly recommend another inexpensive but extremely useful tool uh, we're just about there one thing I can say for it is <laughs> it fits real well in the right hand uh, it fits pretty good in the left hand that's that feels good like having that with those facets you can really hold that. So maybe there's something to this. Maybe this will be something that I uh, kind of make a signature move. I don't know. We'll see. We'll get. We'll see. Okay, so that's all assembled. Uh, again, with the Brad's workbench, um, you just wipe off the excess, and uh, of course the uh, the tongue oil will take a, a, a week or two or three to polymerize. So that's fine. You can still handle this. It is protected by beeswax and uh, carnauba wax. It, Gosh, it's just a great feeling finish. Just feels good. That wax is really nice. This will polymerize. This will set up and protect this. Give it a water resistant finish. Um, this is just a little, I think it's a 0.7 millimeter uh, lead. Just a typical click pencil. Um, again, from the uh, DuraClick. Uh, it's a great little, it's a great little pencil, great little system. Um, 
But there it is, Bubinga, four axis pen barrel. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do these often, but it can be done. The question was, can you? And the answer is, watch me. Just remember, one more pass means put the bowl gouge down. Thanks for joining.